problem we want to solve this week is as follows. We're given an equilateral triangle of side length 6, and it's divided into 36 small equilateral triangles of side length 1. And we construct some diamonds and trapezoids by joining triangles of side length 1, like this. And we want to use M diamonds and N trapezoids to construct the large triangle by fitting the diamonds and trapezoids together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle with no overlapping and no gaps. And the problem is to determine all the possible values of M. So what are the possible number of diamonds needed in order to successfully fit the diamonds and trapezoids together in order to construct the large triangle of side length 6. So the problem is giving us an equilateral triangle of side length 6, like this, So each side of this equilateral triangle is 6 units long, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're given these diamond and trapezoid pieces, like this, which are made up of equilateral triangles of side length 1. And we're asked to construct this large triangle using these diamonds and trapezoids, which fit together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. I can just start at the upper vertex of the large triangle and form my first unit triangle by drawing a horizontal line across like this, where this line is parallel to the base of my triangle here. Or I could start in any corner, so I could draw this short line segment here, which is parallel to this side here, or I could go one unit length and draw one unit triangle with this side parallel to this side right here. So I can start with a unit triangle in any one of the corners of my big triangle. I just chose to start at the top, and then I could form my first diamond piece by reflecting this unit triangle across its base, like this, and next I could construct this trapezoid by drawing another horizontal line across like this again, parallel to the base of this big triangle. And by similar triangles, can you see that I've made four unit triangles, one, two, three, four, all inside this larger triangle of side length two. Now I can get my third row by reflecting the second row across its base of length two, like this, so I can reflect this triangle, and then I can reflect this triangle, and I can reflect this triangle, so row one, two, three, so for this third row, I get the same number of triangles I had in the second row, three, plus these two triangles on either side, on the ends, when I extend this baseline, again parallel to the base of the large triangle. So if we're keeping track of the number of triangles in each row, so far we have one triangle in the first row, three in the second row, and one, two, three, four, five in the third row. 
So this is the number of unit triangles in each row. And we see that we're forming a list of odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, because the number of unit triangles in each row is going up by 2 each time. So for the fourth row, we're going to get 7 unit triangles like this. So I take these 5 triangles in this third row and reflect them down like this. And that's five triangles, plus the other two on either end, for a total of seven triangles in the fourth row. And keep going like this. For the last two rows, we have nine and eleven unit triangles. Like this. And we can also keep track of the totals so in the first row we have one unit triangle and within the first two rows we have one plus three or four unit triangles and in the first three rows we have those four triangles plus these five or nine unit triangles and then in the first four rows, we add seven more, so 16 unit triangles. Within this larger triangle of side length four, and we see a pattern here. So add nine and get 25, add 11 and we get 36. So, in an equilateral triangle of side length 2, we have two squared unit triangles. In an equilateral triangle of side length 3, we have three squared unit triangles. And so on. In an equilateral triangle of side length 4, we have four squared unit triangles. And this is supposed to be a 6. My bad. Let me fix that. So in an equilateral triangle of side length k, there are k squared unit triangles inside. In particular, as indicated in the problem of the week, our big triangle has side length 6 and we've made a regular tiling using 6 squared or 36 equilateral unit triangles. It is interesting to note that the triangular tiling that we obtain in this problem is an example of one of only three regular edge-to-edge -edge tilings of the plane made with convex regular polygons. The other two regular tilings are the square tiling and the hexagonal or honeycomb tiling. We didn't need to know this in order to solve the problem of the week, but it's fun to observe that the honeycomb tiling can be obtained by selecting a subset of the edges from the triangular tiling, like this. There are other ways to tile the plane. For instance, here is an example of one of the eight edge-to-edge semi-regular tilings of the plane. This one uses two types of convex regular polygons. But if you know you're looking for a regular edge-to-edge -edge tiling of the plane, 
that uses only one kind of convex regular polygon. Then these three are the only three tilings you can get. So far, we've tiled the large equilateral triangle with small unit triangles, and the problem of the week asks that we form a new tiling of this triangle by gluing the unit triangles together into two types of tiles, diamonds and trapezoids, like this. And we're being asked to construct this larger triangle from these two types of tiles, or jigsaw puzzle pieces. So like this, Or maybe like like this. Or like this. And once we get the big triangle completely tiled with trapezoid and diamond pieces like this, then we're being asked to find out how many diamond pieces can be used to do this. To get a grasp of what the problem is asking, it could be helpful to first look at a few examples with equilateral triangles of smaller side length and look at the possible ways to tile those smaller triangles with diamonds and trapezoids. So for example, we could look at the small equilateral triangle of side length 2, and you can see that I've started to try to color this with diamonds and trapezoids, and it's not working for me. If we use a diamond, then this corner triangle has to be connected to its neighbor like this to make a diamond like that. And this results in two isolated and unconnected unit triangles. And that's no good because we need to construct this triangle using only diamonds and trapezoids. And if we try to use a trapezoid, that's going to look something like this and we're always going to have one leftover unit triangle so that's no good either so it's impossible to tile a triangle of side length 2 using just diamonds and trapezoids so let's go a little bit bigger and let's consider an equilateral triangle of side length 3 and it will have three squared or nine unit triangles inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how about, let's try to calculate the possibilities. So we have nine unit triangles in here which we'll use to form diamonds and trapezoids. Now, 9 is not an even number, and so we cannot use only diamonds because we'd always get one unit triangle left over since 2 does not divide 9 evenly. So that means that in order to tile this triangle with trapezoids and diamonds, we need to use at least one trapezoid which contains three unit triangles. And then we would have six unit triangles left over, which could be used to make three diamonds, like this. Alternatively, we could use these remaining six unit triangles and make two more trapezoids for a total of three trapezoids and no diamonds, like this. What I've discovered is, I could do this. 
I could tile this triangle with three trapezoids. I even did it in two different ways, like this. And the second tiling is a mirror image of the first tiling. However, this first option with only one trapezoid does not work. I'll show you a picture of what I mean. So for a triangle of side length 3, if we have just one trapezoid, where can we put it? We can't put it here. This would lead to two isolated unit triangles. That's no good. We can't put it here. This would also lead to an isolated unit triangle up here. No good. We can only put it here, like in this triangle, or here. And of course, by symmetry, we could put it along the side, either side, the right side or the left side. And that's the only place where I can put my trapezoid tile. And once I've done that, I have three diamonds left to tile with. And this corner piece has got to be connected to its neighboring triangle here. So I have to put a diamond here and the other diamond tile has to go here and I have one remaining diamond tile which I can't put down because I have two isolated leftover unit triangles like this. And the same thing happens to me in this picture if I put my trapezoid over here. So we can see that it is impossible to tile the triangle of side length 3 using one trapezoid and three diamonds. Not possible. So in order to tile the triangle of side length 3, only one of these options is possible, and that is we have to use three trapezoids and no diamonds. So we're getting the idea here, and just for fun, I'm going to show one more smaller triangle. This time, let's look at a triangle of side length 4. And again, let's show how to try to calculate the possibilities. So for a triangle of side length 4, we have 4 squared or 16 unit triangles inside, which we'll use to form diamonds and trapezoids. And here is my list of possible ways to write 16 as a combination of trapezoids and diamonds. So 16 is divisible by 2, so I could use 8 diamonds, and then I ask myself, could I use one trapezoid? Well, one trapezoid contains three triangles, which would leave me 13 triangles left over to make diamonds, and 13 is not an even number. So if I tried to make diamonds with 13 triangles, I'd always have one triangle left over. So that's no good. So can you see why Every time I want to 
convert some of these diamonds into trapezoids, I have to take off six triangles so that I can make two trapezoids, which I form the two trapezoids from three of the diamonds. So every time I gain a trapezoid, I have to gain two trapezoids and I lose three diamonds. So instead of zero trapezoids and eight diamonds, I could use two trapezoids and five diamonds, or I could gain two more trapezoids for a total of four trapezoids if I lose three more diamonds for a total of five minus three is two diamonds. And after this, I can't make any more trapezoids out of two diamonds because two diamonds only has four triangles and I need to pull off six more triangles to make two trapezoids. And so I don't have six triangles left here. So my list of possibilities stops here. So we see a list of three options as to how to take 16 unit triangles and form trapezoids and diamonds out of there. The three ways that I could do it. I could have zero, two, or four trapezoids and respectively eight, five, or two diamonds. And those are all the ways that I could write 16 as a combination of trapezoids and diamonds. But what we're trying to find out is which of these options is actually possible? Well, it's not necessary to know this in order to solve the problem, but I found it entertaining to note that for any triangle of side length 3 or greater, in order to tile it with just trapezoids and diamonds, it's actually necessary that somewhere along the side, each side of the triangle there must be a trapezoid with its base along the edge of the triangle, like this, or like this, and this side must contain a trapezoid with its base along the side like this, somewhere along the side like this or like this and likewise for all three sides this has to be the case. For example look at my triangle of side length 3. Yep, each side has a trapezoid like that with its base along the edge like this. There's one for each side in this small triangle. And that's going to be the case for any triangle of side length 3 or greater. So if my triangle is of side length 4 or 5, I know this has to happen. So in every tiling I show you in this video, and in all the tilings depicted in the written solution, you will see this happen. It's not difficult to show that this must happen. You might take a moment to think about why this is true. But because I know this is true, I know that any successful tiling with trapezoids and diamonds requires a minimum of three trapezoids, one for each side of the triangle, like this. And therefore, for the triangle of side length 4, we may rule out these first two options. These first two options are impossible because we can't tile this triangle with no trapezoids or just two trapezoids because we need a minimum of at least three. That leaves just one option left, and that is to use four trapezoids and two diamonds. And this option is possible. Yes. So I'll show you 
I found three ways to do it. There are many ways to do it. So here are three of the ways that I found to tile the triangle of side length 4 with trapezoids and diamonds. So each of these tilings has four trapezoids and two diamonds. I have two orange diamonds. I put them in the corners. I put one in the corner and one on the side. I put each one on the side. Lots of possibilities here. And again, as promised, each side of the triangle has a trapezoid with its base along the edge, like this. In this case, it's the two yellow ones and the purple one. There is another trapezoid along the side of the triangle, this green one, which is oriented differently along this side. But for each side of the triangle, there must be at least one with its base along the edge, like this, for each side, like this, and like this. Again, we didn't need to know that fact in order to solve the problem of the week. This is just an amusing side remark. No pun intended. So now, we're ready to solve the triangle of side length 6, which has 6 squared, or 36 unit triangles in it, and here is my list of possible ways to write 36 as a combination of trapezoids and diamonds. Now, we know some of these are going to turn out to be impossible. For example, using my little trick that I just mentioned with the triangle of side length 4 and 3, I know we're going to rule out these first two options. Because I know we need at least three trapezoids, one for each side of the triangle, so we won't get a successful tiling with no trapezoids or just two trapezoids. But I didn't prove why that was true, I asked you to think about it. We also see that the list of options is getting longer. And doing a case analysis is certainly possible, but I promise it will be tedious. So instead, let's make one last mathematical observation that is a helpful tool to solve this problem easily. And that is, Let's color the triangle like a checkerboard, like this, so that we have green unit triangles, which are oriented in the same direction as the large triangle, and we have white unit triangles, which are oriented in the opposite direction. Namely, to get the orientation of a white unit triangle, you would need to reflect the green triangle along any one of its sides. And let's observe that each diamond is made up of one green and one white unit triangle, like this, and there are three ways that I could orient this diamond with the green diamond tip pointed toward one of the vertices of the large triangle, like this, or up and down, like this, or to the left, so to speak, like this. And there are two kinds of trapezoids. One kind has two green unit triangles and one white, like this. And if we reflect this trapezoid along any of its edges, 
we get a second kind of trapezoid like this with one green and two white unit triangles. And each of these trapezoids can be oriented in three ways with its base parallel to one of the sides of the triangle. So like this, or this side here like this, or this side here like that. And then three ways for this one, like this, or like, like this, or like this. Now, to create a diamond, we must pair one green triangle with one white. And so if we pair them all, one, two, for example, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, uh-oh, look, I have six, two, three, four, five, six leftover green triangles. That means there's no way to tile this triangle with only diamonds, because if we do, we will end up with six of these green unit triangles left over and they need to be paired with other unit triangles in some way to get a successful tiling that consists of just trapezoids and diamonds. So what to do with these leftover green triangles? Well, we need to make diamonds or trapezoids. Now you can't use these spare green triangles to make more diamonds. There simply are not enough white unit triangles to do this. It also doesn't help to try to use these green triangles to make trapezoids like this with two white triangles. If you think about it, this would only yield even more spare green triangles in the end. The only thing that would help is to make more trapezoids like this with two green triangles, and we can do that by taking our spare green triangle and tacking it onto a diamond like that. Therefore, each successful tiling of this triangle requires at least six trapezoids of this type with two green and one white unit triangle. For example, we could successfully tile this triangle using six trapezoids and nine diamonds by regrouping the unit triangles in this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I have left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine diamonds, six trapezoids of this type, and nine diamonds. Can you see that? So here I show how I took this tiling and colored it a little more clearly so I can see my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 diamonds and my 6 trapezoids, like this. So yes, this option is possible. And so therefore we have proved that we can rule out the first three options in my list. 
since each successful tiling of my triangle of side length 6 requires at least 6 trapezoids, we know it's not possible to tile this triangle with only 0, 2, or 4 trapezoids. So these first three options can't be done. Cannot be done. These first three options are not possible. That means we have only four options left and the question is which of these options are possible? We've already answered yes to this option with six trapezoids and nine diamonds. Now actually, what we're going to find out is that the answer is yes to each of these options. Yes, these can be done. I found that if it's not possible to tile the triangle using trapezoids and diamonds, as in the case of these first three options, then without this counting argument involving green and white triangles, it's quite challenging to explain why these can't be done. On the other hand, if it is possible to tile the triangle, then I found it's very easy to find a tiling and Actually, there are many possibilities. The triangle practically tiles itself. So, to finish the problem, I show the tiling that I found for each of these last four options. Here is a tiling for this option. And you can look at the written solution for a different set of tilings. And you can also see the pattern presented in the written solution where two trapezoids are transformed into three diamonds in each successive diagram. So here are the tilings that I found. For the first case with six trapezoids and nine diamonds, well, we've already shown this one that we circled here. I confess, I really went to town with this one. So here are two additional tilings that I found with six trapezoids and nine diamonds. Now the problem asks, is it possible? So showing one possibility is enough. Yes, it's possible. Um, the problem isn't asking how many ways can I do it. But just for fun. Um, also, notice that in each of these cases, the six trapezoids that I use are of this type with two up triangles and one down. Every trapezoid in my pictures is like this. There aren't any like this. You can see I really enjoyed trying to find arrangements with an eye-pleasing symmetry. And in this case, it was really easy to find. I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'm going to put... For the second case, with eight trapezoids and six diamonds, I found this tiling, which I'm just going to tape it right down here like this. And I didn't find a really nice symmetric picture, but here are my six diamonds. I put one in each corner. And here are my three other diamonds here. And then the rest of these, I have eight trapezoids, uh, four yellow ones, two purple, and two green. And just notice that this time, I have seven trapezoids of this type. With two ups and one down, and one trapezoid of this type with one up and two downs. Here's the one with one up and two downs. That's this type. And all of the rest of the trapezoids, the remaining seven in this picture, are of this type. 
with two ups and one down. So yes, it is possible to tile the triangle using eight trapezoids and six diamonds. I have two cases left to try to tile them. So for the third case, with ten trapezoids and three diamonds, I found this tiling. So I put my three diamonds in the corners, and then I have ten trapezoids. So the rest of the tiles are all trapezoids here, ten of them. So yes. And for the ten trapezoids, notice that this time, instead of seven, I have eight of this kind with two ups and one down, and then two of this kind with one up and two downs. And the two with one up and two downs are located here, this green one and this purple one. And if you look, the remaining eight trapezoids all are of this type with two ups and one down. I just like putting the diamonds in the corners. You don't have to do it that way. For example, you can see the written solution for a different arrangement. And for the fourth and last case with 12 trapezoids and no diamonds, so tile the triangle with only trapezoids, I found this tiling, and I can just squeeze it in here. Can you see that? And so this tiling has 12 trapezoids, and this time instead of 7 or 8, we have 9 of this type with 2 ups and 1 down, and the remaining 3 are of this type with 2 downs and 1 up. And so, yes, it is possible to tile the triangle with all trapezoids and no diamonds, like this. The problem didn't ask us to find out what kind of trapezoid, this kind or this kind, but that was an interesting pattern too. Can you explain why? Every time I increase by two trapezoids, I end up increasing the number of this type of trapezoid by one and the number of this kind of trapezoid by one. For fun, this tiling has a nice rotational symmetry. If you rotate this triangle by 120 degrees, you'll get the same arrangement of the tiles. The tiling doesn't have to have a rotational symmetry. You can see the written solution for a different arrangement. In conclusion, we have found that there are exactly four options that we can tile the triangle of side length 6 using only trapezoids and diamonds. And those four options are listed here. So there are four possible values for M, the number of diamonds used to do this tiling. And these possible values are 0, 3, 6, and 9. And the corresponding number of trapezoids used are 12, 10, 8, and 6.
the problem is solved.